Hi, this is David with David's Tutorials, and today I'm going to show you how I make my absolute favorite go-to snack, savory buttered pecans. Before I get into this, let me share with you one thing. Last week I gave a few of these to my niece, and she said, wow, these are so good, you could give them away as Christmas gifts. And that was kind of funny to me because just a few weeks before that, I had done exactly that thing. I had given some sample bags of these savory buttered pecans to several of my friends as I'm remembering you Christmas gifts. Okay, let's get right to it. I'll show you how I make these yummy, delicious snacks, but stay tuned because at the end, I'm going to tell you why they are my very favorite go-to snack. I usually start with a bag of pecans that I buy in the two-pound bag from a big box store because this is the most efficient way for me to buy pecans. In other words, the most pecans for the dollar. I don't usually worry about organic when I buy pecans simply because pecans come in a shell and by the time the shells are taken off of the pecans, the pesticide residue that may be there goes out along with the pecan shells. So I don't usually buy organic pecans. However, I looked up on a blog, it's from Britain, it's called Naturally Good Foods. There's a link down in the description below. On this blog, they say that organic pecans taste a lot better than non-organic pecans. If you ever try the savory buttered pecans, both in the organic and in the non-organic varieties, please come back here and let us all know in the description section down below what you found the difference to be. I generally make these pecans in batches of one pound at a time, mainly because that's how many fit comfortably on my baking sheet, and that's how many fit comfortably in the storage container that I use. I don't think it really matters how big a batch you use, as long as you follow a very strict procedure and make sure they are done correctly. Even though making these pecans is really simple, you should follow the instructions I give you here in this video at least to get started, because I've been making batches of these pecans for more than a year now, and I have made my full share of mistakes. So if you follow my directions here, at least that might save you making those same mistakes. Once you get established following these instructions, if you wanna try variations on them to see if you can make them even better, that would be a good time to do that. I start every baking session by preheating my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 177 degrees centigrade. Then I prepare the baking sheet by lining it with aluminum foil. Over many batches of these pecans, I've found it is always better to use a bit too much foil and overlap all the edges of the pan, because if I use too little foil, then the butter I add later on could get onto the pan and make it so I have to wash the pan. Who wants to wash a pan when they don't have to? Next, I pour out enough pecans to fill the glass container where I'll be storing the finished pecans. Actually, I usually add a few too many pecans because for some odd reason, there seems to be some of the pecans disappear between when they're finished being cooked and when they make their way into the storage container. Anybody got any clue why that might be? Anyway, that way I know exactly how many pecans will fit in the container. As it turns out, the container I use holds almost exactly one pound, about 454 grams of pecans. Finally, I spread those pecans out on the foil lined baking sheet, making one even layer. Quite often, when I finish this preparation phase, I'll have to wait for the oven to finish preheating. Once the oven is up to temperature, I just pop the tray into the oven. You can see I have the oven rack set about halfway up the oven, or maybe a notch higher in that oven. The first thing I do, and the first thing you should always do once you put anything into the oven, is set the timer. For this first baking session, I set the timer to seven and a half minutes. When the timer alert sounds, I retrieve the pan of pecans from the oven and place it on a heatproof surface. For this first phase, I use my glass top stove, but you can use a cutting board or whatever other surface you like. The next thing I do is add brown butter and salt. If you have not yet watched my video on how to make brown butter, you need to do it right now. There's a link in the card right up here in the upper right hand corner of the frame. In any case, 
you need brown butter for these pecans. I believe this is one of the main reasons they are so good. I begin by gathering all the pecans together in a mound in the middle of the baking sheet. Then I add enough brown butter. I must confess, I eyeball this, but I probably should measure. I add enough brown butter to get a good coating of it on all the pecans. I stir it around to get all of them coated. Then I spread them all out to expose all of them again. By the way, I don't think I've ever had a problem with getting too much brown butter on them. Once they're spread out again, I sprinkle the lot with salt. I use a good natural sea salt and would recommend you use the same. Notice how I have taken a silver felt tip marker and highlighted the area on the lid of the container to show me the holes where the salt will come out. This helps a lot. When I add the salt, I only add a moderate amount, not a light sprinkling, but not a heavy sprinkling either. When the pecans are coated with butter and salt, I stir them around again to help distribute both coatings evenly. Over the many batches of these I have made in the last year, I am convinced that the time I take in this step allows the pecans to cool significantly from their first baking, and this is one of the reasons they turn out so good. When I have turned them enough, I spread them out again. You can actually try tasting one at this point, but it won't be nearly as good as the finished product. After spreading them out the second time, I salt them again. I know, this seems like a lot of salt, and if you try sampling one at this time, you might agree it seems like too much salt. However, in all of the people I have given these to, out of everyone who has sampled these pecans, not a single one of them, including my wife who is sensitive to these things, has said that they had too much salt. So a second salting, then remixed to spread out the salt and the butter too, is definitely in order. When you're done with this final remixing, spread them out again to make a single layer. Next, we pop them back into the oven and set the timer for another seven and a half minutes. If you're not staying in the kitchen with the oven, for example, if you go into the next room to check email, you might want to set the timer for only seven minutes to give yourself time to get to the oven after the timer goes off. As for the timing of each baking cycle, it's truly flexible. If you bake it too short of a time, the pecans will not attain that crispy, crunchy goodness that you get in this final product. And if you bake them for too long of a time, they'll start taking on that too done flavor. We don't want that. After the second baking cycle is complete, remove the pan from the oven and let it cool completely. It is important to let it cool fully because this is the final step to allow the goodness to set into the pecans. If you don't believe me, Try it. Sample one of the pecans as soon as it comes out of the oven, then sample it again after it has cooled completely. You'll see what I mean. The final step is to move the pecans from the baking sheet into the storage container. These pecans are so good, they usually don't last very long. However, I have left them on the counter in the storage container for more than a month. I was out of town at the time. And when I came back, they were still as good as fresh baked. I know that explanation took quite a while and seems rather complex, but it's really not. It's really rather simple. Let me give it to you in a nutshell, so to speak. First, you just bake pecans for 350 degrees for seven and a half minutes. Second, you bring them out of the oven, you coat them with brown butter, sprinkle them with salt, you mix them up, you sprinkle them with salt a second time, you mix them up, you spread them out again, and third, you put them back into the oven for seven and a half minutes, and finally, you let them cool completely. Four steps, that's all there is to it. Bake, coat, bake, and cool. That's all there is to it. It is that simple. As near as I can tell, the two secrets why these pecans are so good are one, the double baking. We bake them for seven and a half minutes, they cool off while we do the coating, and then we bake them a second time for another seven and a half minutes. The second secret as to why these are so good has to do with the browned butter. If you've watched my video on brown butter, there's another link to it, then you know I really believe in this brown butter. As I mentioned in the start of this video, 
I'm going to tell you now why these are my absolutely number one favorite go-to snack. The first reason, they're healthy. They have a lot of healthy fats in them, both from the pecans themselves and from the grass-fed butter I use to make the brown butter. They are sugar-free, they are gluten-free, they are ketogenic-friendly. Anybody who is on a sugar-free diet or wants to cut down on sugar, they are absolutely healthy. Second, they contain only a moderate amount of protein. Now, protein is one of the three macronutrients, and it's one of the ones that you don't want to eat too much of behind carbohydrates, which you definitely don't want to eat too much of. But a handful, about 20 halves of pecans, only contains about one gram of net protein. Finally, they are absolutely delicious. I gave a gift of these pecans to a friend in Texas here this last Christmas, and when she tasted them, she said, wow, these are wonderful. You know, I make pecans and give them away as gifts to my friends. I make barbecue pecans, honey pecans, maple pecans, you name the kind of pecans, I probably made them. But these are better than any of those. You can actually taste the pecan flavor. Now, there are two cautions I wanna offer you with these pecans. The first one is not only are they good, they are too good. It's easy to overdose on these pecans, and if you're not careful, you might go there and just get a handful for a snack and wind up eating the whole container full. Don't want to do that. The second caution is that these pecans are not that good as a garnish with many other ingredients. I say this because I tried using them in one of the salads I use. I make dinner salads quite often. And with all of the other flavors in the dinner salad, the delicate, nutty, buttery, delicious goodness of these pecans was overwhelmed by those other flavors. And so it really wasn't worth the effort to make savory buttered pecans and then put them into an environment where they get overwhelmed. I found in my salads, I much prefer using plain, unseasoned, toasted pecan pieces. So don't use them in a situation where their delicate flavor might get overwhelmed by other flavor or you've just wasted your effort. So try these savory buttered pecans. Come back and let us know right down there in the comment section how you like them. If you didn't like them, that's okay. I'd like to know that too. But I'd be willing to bet you, you will really like these pecans. Do you know anybody else who also might like these kind of pecans? If so, share this video with them. Put it up on your Facebook page, put it on your Instagram page, put it on Twitter, send it in an email. Use the sharing link that YouTube provides you right down below this video. If you just share this with other people, then not only will you help the David's Tutorials channel, you'll be blessing your friends with the gift of learning how to make this delicious snack. As always, it would be absolutely wonderful if you could give us a great big old thumbs up on this video. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. I appreciate every single one of you. And if you're not a subscriber, be sure to click the subscribe button and then the bell icon to be notified whenever we post another great tutorial right here on David's Tutorials.